Yesterday, we saw an announcement by Cycling Australia indicating that road bikes with disc brakes are now allowed in local races. There's a few exceptions at the national level and under UCI conditions or UCI categorised races, but for the local amateurs, we can race bikes that we've been purchasing off the shelf for the last two years. This is a good thing. Two things I noted on this straight away was one, they've sidestepped or overstepped the UCI who are still testing road bikes with disc brakes. Well, obviously they work, but UCI haven't allowed them in their races officially yet. So they're one step ahead of the UCI and it's effective immediately. So there's no cooling off period. There's no six months, 12 months, 24 months. It can happen right now. That's a good thing. I totally agree with this position. It makes sense. It's the natural progression and they're not removing anything. They're not taking anything away. They're removing barriers from entry. Sure, it might be a lot of people using these bikes at races or being turned away, but you turn one person away who's the next Richie Port, the next Tiffany Cromwell, that's one person who won't be in the sport for us to champion for in the near future. So why do I support this? Well, a rim really isn't a braking system. The rim itself can be used as a braking surface, but carbon rim braking, there's been some horror stories with that. Alloy itself will grind away and wear down. It's just not an optimal system. Moving over to disc brakes, it's specifically designed as a brake. I'll link below to a video where Raul Lucia discusses this in perfect detail and makes complete sense of why disc brakes are designed to slow you down better than a rim brake. This also allows for better wheels to be made in the future. So it's a progression of technology for a better experience on the road. A few of the arguments against disc brakes on road bikes. Let me go through these and try and debunk them as best I can. The industry is just diving into our pockets for more money, is a common thread here. Of course they are, they're a business. Without the ongoing development and you buying new bikes, the industry doesn't exist. You get to choose though, who dives into your pocket and who takes money out of that. For example, me right here, my giant TCR is a secondhand 2013 bike with caliper brakes. Fine by me, I'm okay with that bike, but I'm not gonna stop the progression of the technology in the near future with disc brakes coming out. I'm just, they're gonna happen, that's okay with me. Another quote that I've read is that I don't want to be in a bunch that has some riders stopping in half the distance as other riders. That's just dangerous. First of all, that's not actually what happens at all. Disc brakes do not make you stop in half the distance. And there are so many factors that go into what contributes to you stopping on a bike. Let me run through the list here. Well, we've got carbon versus alloy brake pads and brake surfaces at the moment. Huge difference in both of those. I've ridden both and it's chalk and cheese. Literally, you feel like you're braking on cheese some of the time with those. The contact patch on the road, it's gonna be different across every rider. Tire width, tire pressure, all contributes to the contact patch. Also, the rider weight contributes to the contact patch on the road and the momentum they hold. So, a 100 kilo rider versus a 50 kilo rider, massive, massive difference. And put a 100 kilo rider on disc brakes any day. Uh, skill and ability, I guess that's what it comes down to. Knowing your bike, knowing how to handle a bike, knowing your braking distances and confidence. Some people will bomb into a corner, some people will brake very, very early. You've got differences already in any bunch, even on the same technology. Same goes with descents. You're gonna have people bombing descents at 100 k's an hour, you're gonna have others bombing at 80 k's an hour. You put those two together, they're not gonna agree if they come together. It's about skill and ability and dodging each other in the bunch. That's what a professional cyclist does. So for a professional cyclist to be worried about that, that's a concern. So just to briefly skim over the can of worms of safety when it comes to disc brakes, well, my bike has 24 blades of spinning death on each wheel. They're called spokes. It's also got a big chain ring. It's got cogs at the back. Things are nasty when you fall off your bike. And the road, let's talk about the road surfaces. No one's rounding off the surface of the road out there for safety. When you hit the deck, things go wrong and things are really, really bad. That's just a risk we accept. Disc brakes, not even an issue for safety. And lastly, touching on the most common reply from the traditional roadies is that these are not necessary. Sure, they might not be necessary. We've got tons of braking force in our caliper brakes, but that's not an argument against discs and the technology they're gonna introduce into the sport. I think they're a good thing. Let me know what you think below. Thanks for watching.